Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about uh, the fig tree generation again and a comment that was made on that video that I did by Jeff Olson, uh, pointing out something that I had no idea about. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it. Make sure to leave your comments and share this on your social media. Okay, so this is what he says. Is the parable of the fig tree related to the Judean date palm tree? This tree was extinct for hundreds of years and then resurrected in 2005 from seeds from Masada. And we're going to go into what that is. See Wikipedia article, Judean date palm, in several YouTube videos. I'm not sure if it's related to the fig tree parable, but it sure seems like there are some interesting parallels. If not related to the fig tree, maybe it fits in somewhere else. It sure seems to have profound parallels to the children of Israel. And after doing my research, I would tend to agree about that. Uh, let me show you uh, what this is all about. Okay. Tree grown from 2,000-year-old seed has reproduced. And, and here it is right here. The Methuselah, or Methuselah, the Judean, the Judean date palm, date palm is still going strong even after sprouting from a 2,000 year old seed. That is just incredible. Get out the cigars. Well, we're not going to, at least not my audience, but get out the cigars. Methuselah, a Judean date palm tree that was grown from a 2,000 year old seed has become a papa plant. Methuselah sprouted back in 2005 when agriculture expert Soloway germinated his antique seed. Uh, it had been pulled from the remains of Masada, which is incredible. Now, let, let me let me tell you about Masada, okay? Maybe some of you know about this, maybe some of you don't. Okay, Masada, this is kind of like similar to the, Al the Alamo. It's like the Jewish Alamo, so to speak. Um, and I don't mean to make light of, of what happened, but, um, okay. So, the Siege of Masada was one of the final events in the First Jewish-Roman War. Occurring from 73 to 74 Common Era, uh, or AD, as I like to call it, on and around a large hilltop in current-day Israel. Here's a picture of it. You can tell this is a very good... Um, fortified area, a good defensive area, because it's really hard <laughs> to, like, climb up these rocks and then, like, attack it, right? This is a really, really good uh, defensive position. Okay. And I want to point out this date right here, 73 to 74. So this was, this was the time of the destruction of the Second Temple, okay? So you can... This conflict right here, the first Jewish-Roman War, and this this major um, well I'm, siege. Okay, I'm not going to call it a battle, but this major siege, it, it's related. This is all related. First Jew Jewish-Roman War, siege of Masada, the destruction of the Second Temple. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some of that. Uh, okay, according to Josephus, and everyone knows Josephus, he was a major. Um, basically historian of the time. According to Josephus, the long siege by the troops of the Roman Empire led to the mass suicide of the Sicarii rebels and resident Jewish families of the Masada Fortress, although this is not supported by archaeological investigation. The siege has become controversial, with some Jews regarding Masada as a place of reverence, uh, commemorating ancestors who fell heroically against oppression, and others regarding it as a testament to extremism and refusal to compromise. Okay, and I think the first time that I heard about Masada, I'm pretty sure it was in seminary in high school, but um, yeah, it, it, it was like kind of a important event. Okay, now the first Jewish-Roman war. Let's see, let me magnify this a little bit. Okay, bear with me. The first Jewish-Roman War from 66 to 73 Common Era, or AD, sometimes called the Great Jewish Revolt, or the Jewish War, was the first of three major rebellions by the Jews against the Roman Empire, fought in Roman-controlled Judea, resulting in the destruction of Jewish towns, the displacement of its people, 
and the appropriation of land for mil Roman military use, as well as the destruction of the Jewish temple and polity. So, yeah, that's kind of like the main event right here, is the destruction of the temple. Okay, since this time, they have not had... Um, I mean, obviously, in, in this dispensation, we now have temples again. But as far as, as far as the Jews are concerned, they haven't had a temple uh, since this event right here. Uh, as the second temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed, one of the events commemorated by the, the observance of Tisha B'Av, Judaism, Judaism fell into crisis with the Sadducee movement falling into obscurity. Uh, Tisha B'Av, so... This, I can't remember exactly what month it is, but Av, it, Av is the, is the, the month in Tisha. So I think it's, some, it's like the, the ninth of Av. I think that's what it, what it actually is. So this, this is like, um, like I just said, it's an observance day. It's like a day of mourning. Uh, they mourn the day, uh, that the temple was destroyed. And um, there's, there's actually kind of a lot around that, but I'll probably get into that more as we approach Tisha B'Av this year in 2022. Okay, and then I just wanted to show you right here, just because I like to kind of like see the context and the big picture. So the three Jewish-Roman wars that it was talking about, uh, there was the first Jewish-Roman war, that's the one that we, we've been talking about with the destruction of the Second Temple, and the Bar Kokhba revolt in 132 to 135, while others include the Kedos War in 115 to 117 as one of the Jewish-Roman Wars. And then here you have a picture of the Romans carrying away uh, the instruments and things that belong, that were from the temple, right? And the most prominent one being the menorah right here. So just, just horrible. So Okay, so now that you know we know about Masada, for anyone that, that didn't know what Masada was, it's interesting that a plant or a seed from 2,000 years ago at Masada has been, quote-unquote, resurrected in our time. Um, you know, yeah, it may not be directly related to, you know, the fig tree generation, per se. Uh, now, I brought up this article here, this is from Healthline, uh, there is a difference between dates and figs. Of, of course, that's why they have different names. But let me just go over this. Figs and dates may seem quite similar, as they're both easy to snack on and often dr eaten dried. While they share some properties, these these fruits also have, a very, have very unique differences. And here's, you know, like a picture of the two. Although figs and dates may be sweet and fibrous, they're two entirely different plants. And then you have the species names here. Phoenix dactylifera, Phoenix dactylifera and Ficus carica, Ficus carica, I don't know. So they're, they are similar uh, in a sense. So I think maybe you could draw a comparison between the two. Um, is it related to the fig tree generation? Um, I tend probably not to think so, but I do think that it's still significant. And I, I don't know. I, I think it, it, it's probably one of the signs of the times. Uh, as you can see here, it made news. And the fact that that particular seed came from Masada, which is something that's related to the destruction of the temple, uh, I think that's significant. And if the Jews are successful at building the third temple... Well, this Methuselah tree, I'm pretty sure it's going to be around to see that happen. So even though this happened back in 2005, it doesn't really matter when it sprouted. What matters is if it's going to be around to see the second temple, right? Because, think, think of it this way. Its parent, okay, the parent that from which this seed came was alive when the, the second temple was around. And therefore, if the Jews build the third temple, or or even if uh, the BYU Jerusalem Center becomes the temple, it doesn't really matter. This plant right here is going to be around to see it, so to speak. Okay, so it makes sense. See, see why this could be pretty significant. 
Um, I, I would tend to agree with Jeff that there there is significance to this. So let's see. So Masada, an ancient fortification perched on a rock plateau in southern Israel. And at the time, no one could be sure that the plant would thrive. But he has, and his recent reproductive feat helps prove just how well he's doing. For a while, the Judean date palm was the sole representative of his kind. Methuselah's variety was reportedly wiped out around 500 AD. Okay, so... I'll put all these links in the description below. Uh, thank you, Jeff Olson CPA, for pointing this out. I, I had no idea about this happening, but it is clearly, to me at least, it, it's clearly evident that this is a significant event. Um, even though it may not specifically be in scripture, uh, you can draw these connections and it's, it's special. It's a special thing that's happened. So, okay, so I'm going to leave that with you. And um, so if you haven't already, uh, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you end up, li or if you liked it. Uh, make sure to leave your comments with what you think about this. Uh, share this on your social media because there, there's probably people that have no idea about this. I didn't know about this until I read his comment. And I'll talk to you guys later.